This is the disassembly of a 2013 MacBook Pro. We're going to replace the entire palm rest assembly. This video is more for my own purposes, but I may post it online. So if you're listening to this narration, it's because I posted it online. Uh, but I really just want to document the disassembly for myself, um, just so that I can have a record of it. Uh, here we go. And it's just, uh, it's just a long, drawn out process. T5, CPU screws. The other reason I'm documenting this is so that I can see where I have put any given component I have removed. Yeah. I'm taking them out in order and putting them in front of my keyboard left to right. And once I run out of room left to right, I will wrap around and start going top to bottom and so on. Grouping things logically. There is a, that is a Phillips. That is not, is this a Phillips screwdriver? It looks like it is. This one weird screw here is a Phillips screw rather than a regular screw. Um, it looks different in everything, so that stands out. I'm gonna get another light. I have another light here. I'm going to use it. Alright, we have another light to work with. Something to low light it since my hand keeps getting in the way of all the lighting. We need to add another light. Let's see what to do, what to do. can't block the lighting so I can see what I was doing a little bit better we're transferring everything from one to the other so actually I'm gonna get this heat sink out of the way but the first order of business really should probably be to transfer the lid off of here there is a rubber thing in the way there and this computer had oil spilled in it, so there's stuff covered in oil all over the place. Um, that's the other thing, is I will have to clean the oil out of this computer. Which I'm not looking forward to. And I'm on a bit of a deadline because the customer is absolutely chomping at the bit to get their hands back on this computer as fast as possible. So, this is uh, the Phillips head screwdriver I don't need, so why do I have that? And I bet this is too small because I used it on the CPU. So I bet this bigger Torx here, which is rubbed off, and therefore I don't know what size it is anymore, also isn't big enough. Well, that's a bit of a problem, isn't it? Uh, gonna need another toolkit to get these off. They're too big. And there's covers on these. Why are there covers on these? Oh, there's an adhesive. That's right. Yeah. The oil has made it very difficult to manage that adhesive. Yuck. Oh god, that's gross. Okay. Alright, toolkit. Need to break out the toolkit because these are too big for me to really get out. Let's see how big they are. Much bigger than that. 
That was a six, it looks like. What's this? T8. T8. They are T8s. Torx T8. These are the hinge screws here. See? Yes. This is not, this is definitely not an ideal camera setup for this, but as long as I can go back and see what I did later with a little happy zooming action, I am totally okay with that. Should be three Torxes per hinge. There we go. There will be some, some Wi-Fi, um, the webcam, and the screen. So there should be at least three cables coming down. Wi-Fi is fairly obvious. Looks like the webcam may be coming over here. I'm not sure. All right. Okay, so let's go ahead actually before we progress any further and pull the battery terminal so that there's no energy going through this board. So there's no risk of anything getting zapped by an error. All right, let's pull the display cable real quick. That's the only thing on this side, display cable. And then on this side we have the Wi-Fi antennas the webcam is here everything's covered in oil again this is going to be a problem uh this is this is this is such a nuisance okay this thing is covered in oil Let's see how much we can get up on this paper towel here we are going to have to probably clean everything along the way, top to bottom. This is all going to have to get cleaned. Okay. Oh no, there's oil in that connector. Are you serious right now? There's oil in the webcam connector? <sighs> Jesus. This, this is, um, This is a mess. This is this is a true mess. Uh, I need to get this oil off everything. <sighs> Extremely frustrating. Okay. Mm. So the display should be removable at this point. In fact, if I try to open it, yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Cock it up about halfway and it should. Mm, other than these retainers here, there's these retainers here that need to be removed before it'll come out. Oh, and they're tiny torxes too. How tiny? Well, let's find out. I bet this purple one fits. Are they torxes? Or are they pentalobe just to piss me off? Oh, and make no mistake, if they're pentalobe, it will piss me off. These things right here, are they Torx or are they Pentalobe? It's hard to tell from here. Looks like they're Torx and this is just too small. All right, so blue. No, wait, that's a Pentalobe. All right, no, no, can't be that. Could be this, it could be the retainer clips here that hold the display in are the next thing to come out. They are little cutesy clips. There, yep, okay. Mm. Okay. Okay. Everything's covered in oil in here. Everything's covered in oil in here. Let's get the display off of here so I don't have to think about it anymore. That didn't rhyme at all. Come on, get up. Up. There you go. Lift. Good. Okay. I am 
deeply curious what is on this screen. Um, is that oil too? Or is it just scuffed up or something? There's both. There's both oil and something that I can't identify going on here. But I'm just going to clean what oil I can off and we'll figure that out later. Uh, I got nowhere to put this. Throw that away. Got oil all over it. All right. Next, what do we have next? Really need to get this motherboard out of here. DC jack's gonna have to get transferred. Maybe we go ahead and get the DC jack removed. I'm thinking. Maybe. Maybe not. I don't know. Use my fingernails to pull this little wire here. I swear to God, everything is making noise behind me and I hate it. I don't know what to do about it though. All right. All right, DC Jack, come out of here. Get this MagSafe. MagSafe 2 out of here. Continuing our MacBook disassembly. CPU fan here. Screws are separate. The left screw is longer than the right screw. The right and bottom screws, from this perspective, appear to be identical. This is a back flip lock connector. Go ahead and get this assembly up, and that is not good at all. There is a lot of oil. Oh, that's a lot of oil. Oh God. Hmm. Look at look at all that oil. You see all that oil? That's not good. That is super not good. Uh, at least the fan is oiled, right? I don't know, but. I don't know if I can get all this off. I may have to, I may have to go get some dish detergent to do this with. This is rough. That is, that is rough. It would probably make more sense to wait. Until the motherboard's out before I go cleaning everything. I already unhooked this keyboard in the previous visit. The new keyboard will go there. This flat connector here needs to come up. Easy to break as well, I'm noticing. So that's a problem. Must be careful. Right here. We have the uh, push, push. There you go. I don't want to push. You're so silly. Hey, I'm 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 making videos of me fixing this computer. Okay, can you let me finish this up? Yeah. I'm sorry. Okay. I love you. <laughs> You're so sweet. Shut the door. Thank you. That's enough. So here's the little connector for the lid. It's also a back flip lock, it looks like. Yep, it is. Grab this little tab here and pull it back. 
gently try not to break anything, but that's that is stuck. That is quite stuck. Okay. Yeah, we won't be able to actually pull it out yet. It looks like we can't. Uh, this one we can probably pull out though. Let's let's give it a tug and see if it catches on fire if I'm not. Yep, there we go. I don't know if there's oil in it or not, but we'll figure that out later. Okay, so are there any other wires going straight to the motherboard of this daughter board over here? I don't think so. Hmm. Can we take the motherboard and the daughter board out as an assembly and not have to rip it all apart? Let's find out. So, all of these ones with copper rings are surely holding the board in. There is actually a cable here. It's a flat cable though. It's easy enough to lift up. Messages. Uh, nope, they've got no messages. There. Okay. I don't know if there are any underneath the SSD, but I'll find out in just a minute. There we go. Now, what about the daughter board? There's clearly one right here beside this connector. Okay. All of the motherboard, daughter board screws look like they're the same size, except this over here looks like it's holding it and is probably much larger. And that is hinge sized, which was, I believe, a T8. Can't remember, but it's big. Yep, it definitely was holding it in. It's quite big, it's unique. It has a cylinder underneath the head. So we will pop that. Let's see, anything else? Looks like, nope. So I think motherboard here, the motherboard probably will come up first and slide over. Did we get that cable out? No, we didn't get that cable out there didn't come out really need that cable to come out the battery is kind of in the way though very frustrating and we can get a narrower driver underneath it pull back on it gently get out of there there you go We'll worry about putting it all back together when we actually get to where we can put it all back together. Okay, slide back, slide back. There we go. Yep, the oil definitely infiltrated under there. There are connectors under here that I did not know were there, so I may have to take this off anyway, at least one side of it, which is fine. If I have to take one side off, that's fine. So these two screws go to this shield here. If the shield comes off, I'll add the shield to them so I know where it came from. Shield does come off. Uh, I had oil under it. Flat connector here. Up. The flat connector looks like it does not have oil. The connector here needs to come up vertically. But it, but it is sticky, very sticky. Get up, there you go. Uh, yeah, there's a big adhesive right there. 
let's just, just for funsies, stick those back together. Move the motherboard, all that to the display over there. And now we can see a much larger extent of oil. We're replacing this, so I don't actually care about most of this. Now this is where things get ugly. We have to get this battery out, which means, well, first of all, uh, that backlight layer there, let's check the new part. Where is the new part? Here it is. Let's see what the new part has. The new part comes with this connector, this connector, but not this other connector, which I think goes to some sensor or something. This little connector and the keyboard connector here. So that's the new part. And it also has the little clips. So we don't need to transfer these from one to the other. Let's see, start taking the battery frame out. Long screws here. And we'll just, actually, I don't think this is the battery frame, is it? These are speakers, that's what that is. It's not the battery frame at all. These are the speakers. And that's what these wires are. They are the speakers and they are stuck down. Yeah. The lower screw is the shortest of them. It looks like there are three lengths, longest, medium, shortest. For my own reference, that's important. Okay, one speaker assembly moved. Uh, it looks like this is a speaker screw for the other speaker assembly here. Okay. It, uh, these two screws look like they're the same length, possibly. And the third one is shorter, so long, long, short. All right, now it's hooked under. Yes, push, bump it. There you go. What's up? Did you know that Sonic actually rode up in a ball, and when he was a ball, he sticked his head out? I didn't know that. Hey. I gotta finish this, okay? Okay, then I'll close it forever. Yeah, don't close it hard. Just close it. There you go. Thank you. This one, yeah, did any oil get on this? I actually don't think these speakers got oiled. Yeah, that one felt like it might have, actually. Maybe around the fringes? Yeah, that got some oil on it. It'll be okay. It'll be okay, it's not that much. I need to check the motherboard. Speakers are out at this point. It should just be battery. So let's start removing some battery screws. There's that one. There's probably not much else, but uh, let's find out real quick. Ew, ew. Warning, warning, if you're not Apple, you're not allowed to fix your own stuff. How dare you? You're a bad person for even trying. Bad, bad boy. Okay. Can we get the touchpad out of here? Can we get the touchpad out of here without doing anything? There. Looks like the whole assembly is hidden under the battery, so no, we can't get the touchpad out. We will have to remove the battery adhesive now. Ah, this is the part that I was not looking forward to, as I really don't want to deal with this battery adhesive garbage. But I also have no real choice. So. Okay. I purchased an adhesive remover kit for my Fix-It, which includes adhesive remover and cards, which is really the only thing I need. Don't really care about the rest. 
It says, don't be stupid. Don't inhale. You're dumb. Ah, good. I'm, I'm glad to know that I'm dumb. All right. So we need to dissolve this adhesive. Good luck getting this open. Is this open, actually? Can't tell. Do I need to cut the end off here? Seems like I probably need to cut the end off here. Yeah, gotta cut the end. Just get a, get a knife and cut the end off of this. Gently, as it were. <sighs> All right, well, it's gonna be difficult, so let's see if we can cut it with something else, maybe. I don't know. Actually, there's a kind of fun little scoring thing there on the knife, but it's gonna be like this. goes. Can't tell. All right. I don't know how liquidy this stuff is, but I've never actually used the adhesive remover before. I pried it the last time I did this, so we'll see what happens. Just to be completely clear, lithium ion batteries scare the crap out of me. That is all. And for good reason. Because they are really dangerous pieces of hardware and they need to be respected. And frankly, the fact that Apple uses such strong adhesive really pisses me off. That is all. That is all. Oh, Lord. See if we can get this adhesive off of here, huh? Let's get the strips off of here, huh? No? Okay, fine. That's fine. Adhesive sucks. Gluing together computers is a stupid, stupid thing to do. Ain't worrying about the rest. Forget this. Yeah, forget this. I'm not, I'm not dealing with that. That nonsense can just, yeah, I'm not dealing with it. Yeah. Yeah, dear. Well, where's my back on the thing? 
heating and prying. The fun of this can be measured at zero. This is zero fun. That's hot. That is very hot. And there's oil everywhere. Great. Oh, this is not good. None of this is good. Everything about this is the opposite of good. Oh, God. Mm. Oh, that's just an easy one. Uh, look at this crap. Oh, my God. Look at this crap. Stupid adhesive crap. What a mess. I don't even know why this is part of this computer at all. Sounds about right. It's called a survivorship bias. Only the planes that made it back alive could tell you what went wrong, and this skews your perception of reality as you make assumptions about what you do not know. And this also happened with planes during World War II. And taking a look at this photo, you might notice something. While the US military thought at the time that the most shot areas... Now we're gonna take the brackets off that hold the touchpad down. That one's actually loose. What about this one? Is this one loose too? This one is all... Uh, seems like it was also loose. We'll get these out at the end.
No oil infiltrated the touch pad itself. That's good. Okay. That's the end of that. Oh, the bench is covered in oil. Great. Absolutely covered in oil. Great, great. Yummy, yummy, yummy. Mm. Oh, the touchpad brackets didn't have to go. Lovely. Reassembly is the reverse of disassembly. Pretty straightforward, isn't it? No, it's not. Have a good one.